Hello, welcome to the Tired Craftsman channel. I am your host, the Tired Craftsman. And if you follow me on Instagram, you're already well aware of my plan to take over the world with a vast robot army. Of course, that wasn't always the plan. Note, before they were mechanized harbingers of death, they were harmless Halloween animatronics. And tonight, I'm going to show you how I make them. To make the head, I start by heating up a piece of polypropylene in an oven. Then once it's molten hot, I'm going to bring it over to a vacuformer where I have a mold set up. The vacuformer is going to suck the plastic down and make it take the form of the mold. And once the plastic cools down, I can draw the face on and pop it off the mold. Then using a jeweler's tool, I grind around the lines that I made to create some depth in the face. Then I'm going to take some steel wool and scuff up the surface so that the plastic will take paint better and so that I can get rid of some of these marker lines that I don't want. I don't want any paint over the eyes of the mouth so I cover them up with painter's tape and then cut away the excess. Then I'm going to mark some lines that I'm going to run some hot glue over to kind of create like a weld effect. I like these guys to look like they are made out of kind of whatever I could find, you know? I mean, they were, but I want them to look like they are made out of scrap metal instead of plastic and wood. Then to make the ears and some of the coverings for the body, I'm just going to cut all the pieces out of some plastic buckets. Might not be the most conventional thing, but it's easy to cut through and they're cheap. To attach the ears onto the head, I'm going to drill some holes in and then I'm going to use some aluminum pop rivets and a rivet gun to attach them. If you've never used pop rivets before, they're really simple. You just put the rivet through both pieces that you want to fasten together, then you take a washer and you put it on the back side, and then you're going to use the rivet gun to pull the rod through the rivet, and it crimps the end of it that the washer is on, making it bigger than the hole of the washer, and that fastens it together very securely. Then to shape some of the coverings, I take a heat gun to the plastic, which makes it really warm and malleable. Just want to make sure you don't burn the plastic, believe me, that's, that's not good for anybody. Next I gotta start working on the frame that's gonna be made up of 1x2s. I had already started making the legs for this one a while ago, so I'm just gonna use that. Then I drill some holes in them to attach the feet on, and then I'm gonna use this bit to create a bigger hole to countersink the screws, which will make them flush so that it doesn't wobble when it's standing upright. Seems sturdy enough to me, so we're gonna move on. Next I'm gonna cut some pieces for the spine and the shoulders, leaving them about 7 inches long, and I'm going to cut this piece out right here so I can attach the shoulder into it to make it sturdier, if that makes any sense. I think it does, you can see what I'm doing. Also, there's going to be a whole lot of drilling and putting in screws, so I'm going to kind of skim over that, but just trust me, I, I did that a lot. I decided to put some pivot points in here for the arms. I don't plan on putting a motor on them for right now, but I like to have that option if I change my mind later and want some arm movement. Okay, now we're getting to the fun part. Uh, how best to explain this? I want to have the head pivot back and forth with a motor, so I need some sort of base for it to be mounted on, so I take a piece of plastic, throw a couple screws in there, and hopefully that'll be enough for it to all kind of rest on. Then I'm going to use this 12 volt DC motor to turn the head, and I'm going to put this fitting on top of it. I forget the name of it, but I found it on Amazon, and I'll put all the links in the description so you don't have to spend hours looking for all these things like I did. Then to make sure that the motor stays on here securely, I'm going to use this little mount to bolt it on. And once the motor's put in, I can put this little fitting on top of it and use this Allen wrench to tighten it on. And the motor's not going to be any good without batteries, so I solder some wires on here to attach it to a battery pack. So I want to turn the head back and forth, so I made this little mechanism here. I uh, attached a piece of plastic to the mount and then attached on top of it a piece of coat hanger wire, and when this rotates, it's going to turn the head back and forth. I don't really know how to put it into words, but you'll see what I mean. Yeah, point is it worked and you, you get the idea. Then I'm going to put all the coverings on as a test fit to see if they all fit on comfortably together and to make sure they don't get in the way of the head moving back and forth. And they don't, so that's good. And just like with the head, I'm going to scuff them up a bit with some steel wool so that they take paint better. And throw some, you know, aesthetic things all over them, put some welds and stuff like that. Then to paint them, I'm going to put two coats of primer on them, two coats of metallic aluminum, and then I'm going to dust them a little bit with some flat black. Then I remembered I needed to make some arms, so I cut some PVC pipes up, picked out some end caps I liked, drilled a few holes, 
put some bolts in, and then cut some slits in there so that I could fit some claws into the ends of the forearms. And now that the base coats are dry, I can do some weathering. I start by taking some black acrylic and putting it in all the edges along the welds, kind of making like some burn tarnished parts, and putting some black in the little crevices to make it look like some grease and grime got stuck in there. Then using some silver acrylic, I highlight over all of the welds to make them stand out a bit, and add a few little scuffs and scratches here and there. I really like adding little details like this because it really makes it look like the bots have been through some stuff. And now we get to my favorite part of the paint job, which is removing the tape and seeing what the finished piece is going to look like. Yep, that'll do. And now at long last we can do the final assembly and see how this little guy turned out. And I think he came out alright. Andy works, which is all you can really ask for. And there's only one more thing to do to really bring this little guy to life. So I uh, noticed you don't have a bed in here, Night Owl. Yeah, me too. You know, it's kind of like my whole brand, Tiger Craftsman. Some people say I take a little too far, I actually deprive myself of sleep, but I mean, I'm not messing with Tiger Team 25, you are going to take trash from the shop and put it in the can. 